vlog is now sponsored by Monster Energy. Just kidding, but maybe if I say it, it'll actually happen. Anyways, and we're back. It is max effort bench day today. And whenever I'm going into a max effort session, I have questions on my mind based on the previous weeks of training that I want to try to answer with that max effort day. And in the context of today's bench, what I wanna figure out is, number one, can I solve that laziness issue with the scap, with the tricep, with the serratus that I was having on my unracks of the speed benches earlier this week? Question number two is with last week's max effort day, struggling with setting my upper back well on the floor press, can I be more assertive with my upper back today? And question number three, since I'm circling back to that foam roller press, I wanna know, do I feel more comfortable with big weights in my hands than I did the last time I was on that foam roller? And by answering those questions, I'll have a better idea of where to go with the next week's training. And of course, there's gonna be more questions on my mind after today, but I gotta get through today to figure out how things are gonna go. So let's get warming up and get into it. Realized that first one with 135 wasn't good enough, so I put it back and made sure I did a better job. So that wasn't sketchy on the pack, but the shoulder felt a little bit jank. So I'm gonna spend some time, try to figure that out, come back and see if we can do a better job. And it's kind of like the same kind of sketchy that I was feeling on those body weight dips. So I'm wondering if I just overcooked it with the dips, but I ran some serratus isos, I ran some sub scapularis isos, grabbed some pushups, dropped it down to a plate, see if we can make it feel at least a little bit better and give it another run. Is my left locked? Is your left what? Left arm straight. Not sagging? No. I think that felt better. Triceps, lock it all in, squeeze. Yeah. Straighten it out. Yeah. Go. Okay, that felt closer to right. Better make this feel good because if I don't make it feel good, I'm gonna have to pivot and I really don't want to pivot. Lock it in, squeeze, squeeze, fuck yeah, nice, good. That was good. Still not great, but at least it is workable. Okay, ran some more isos, did some more push-ups. Let's see if we can make this feel more better. What? Little hesitant on the way down, like I kind of felt the shoulder wanting to wander, so I just slowed it down, made sure it was right, took it to the bottom, felt at least okay. Last full range one, and what I'm telling myself is that if I don't make this one feel good, I don't get to put the foam roller down. And roller's out, so that one was at least good enough. Squeeze. Good. And I just did not trust it taking the bar out there. And like, younger Seth, 
dumber Seth. Probably would have just said it anyways, but just coming off of a pec surgery, Seth, not worth sending. And I might take a few minutes here and see if I can figure something out that would make it worth taking again, but also not going to try to do something too silly. Okay, we're back. Figure I got like a 90% chance of making this good. So let's make it good. More better, again. So once again, this is the reward for getting my shit together. Nerves high, but let's go have some fun. Yes, good. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. Wow! <laughs> Stoked. That was the best one of the day by a freaking long shot. 20 pounds up from the last time I ran the roller. Didn't push out and actually like sunk it into the roller decently, which I didn't do the last time. And as far as like the questions I had going into that, like the arm was sorted with Miana reminding me to lock it out. And I guess the thing right now with it is that it feels like I'm doing it right, even when I'm doing it wrong. So like having that reminder to push further through and really get it there, that was necessary and that definitely helped. Upper back got sorted better as I got things figured out. And I guess like questions left to answer is, can I get the shoulder sorted out so that it doesn't jack things up and make it such a freaking pain in the ass to get to a work set and I think that the biggest thing I need to be doing is like those dips I did on Tuesday were just too much for where the shoulder is right now body weight and I think what will be smart will be to go back to the chaos push-up because everything was working really 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 well when I was doing those I can still push those hard enough to make them effective but they just aren't so gnarly on the shoulder so I think that is the only pivot I need to make for next week so Let's get to rolling accessories today because I, I don't think I need to change anything on today's accessories. So, yeah, let's go. And I'm going to be smart again and turn the bench around so I have better lighting for the dumbbell presses. I gotta tilt that seat up because I almost died like seven times. This thing is so freaking slippery. And last week, I just ran one set of the 120s. And like, they felt good enough today, but not good enough to make me want to go 130. So I'll just run another set here, get a little bit more volume in with them, and that'll be enough to bump things ahead for me. Yeah, glad I didn't go 130s. And knowing that the shoulder's a little spicy right now, gonna 
pivot from the rollings that I did last week to a tape press. Still gonna be able to hit the triceps hard, but shouldn't irritate the shoulder at all. We're going up. And like started light with the 60s because I haven't done these in a while. And I'm not sure how they feel, but I guess I should know with how JM's and Rolling felt that these should be strong. And on tape presses, first thing you want to do is grip the dumbbells so that your thumbs are actually touching the inside of the plate. That'll give you a little bit more range of motion. And that becomes more important as you get to bigger bells. And when I'm doing these, I'm gonna lead by cocking my wrist down. And I'm just gonna lower the dumbbells to my chest and big spread to the top. And I'm okay if these get a little bit sloppy because I'm not doing them for triceps hypertrophy. I'm doing them for carryover to spread in the bar hard on bench. And this is gonna be really freaking good for building that up. <sighs> and then we go over here to a push down and the push down, I'm doing more for hypertrophy purposes. So I'm gonna be slow, I'm gonna be controlled, I'm gonna really load the eccentric, contract as well as I can to the concentric. And that is what's gonna grow the triceps. And it's like the push downs getting bigger triceps here is gonna let me have stronger triceps on the taint and the stronger triceps on the taint. Did I say taint? I said taint. Ah, that is gonna let me have a bigger bench press. Ah, and that is how accessories work 101. And just cause you're doing something slower, squeezier, doesn't mean you can't work hard. And I wanted to use this handle because it's sick, but it's on like a rubber strap, which is very disadvantageous compared to the nice silky smooth ropes over here. Because number one, it's like sticky. Number two, it's really wide. So it like rubs my head and I can't really put my head beside it because it's too wide. So I don't know, one more set, we'll deal with it. Yeah, it's like in front of my face, it just like sticks to my hat and nose. Beside my head, it's so wide that I get really lopsided, it feels weird. So I'll just have it rub it on my face. If I have a brown mark on my nose, I swear that's what it's from. Oh, shoulders. Shoulders and a figure. Just run the classic front side superset. Try to control out of the bottom. <laughs> Actually contract. Don't just swing. Control the eccentric. Make it as hard as you can with the weight you got. <laughs> Sides. <laughs> Set two, down to 25s, because I realized the 30s were probably a little heavy for the intent I want to keep on these. Looking at the monitor to realize that Miata's doing flies beside me, so I'm trying to time it so we don't clip. <laughs> Not gonna be overzealous and try to compete with Drell on these today, because sometimes you can bring it and win, but if the goal is big arms, 
and I swing it to beat him, I'm not gonna get bigger arms and then uh, won't win the real competition. And the real competition uh, is the gun show. And efficiency mode here, gonna run a supinated narrow pull down. And I know everyone in the internet's like, you don't wanna put biceps in your pull downs because you're putting biceps in your pull downs, you're cheating away from lats. But if we do it with some deliberate intent and like lead with the lats and then finish with a bicep squeeze, we can get a lot of good work in for both at the same time. And is it gonna be as effective as training lat specific alone or training bicep specific alone? Probably not, but if you're short on time, it's gonna be a way to at least get decent work in on both ends. <laughs> and realistically, <sighs> we want lats and biceps to be able to work together on pulling anyway, so. It ain't the worst thing in the world. And if you're doing them for both, you'll know you're doing a good job if they're both burning out together right about at the same time, which is happening right now, and it's <sighs> wonderful. Feels like Arnold in Pumping Iron, if you know what I mean. Little more on the stack. and just trying my hardest to find that contraction in both the arms and the lats. And it's like I'm trying to pull elbows down and I'm trying to pull hands towards my face. And it actually feels good. Miana would like me to inform the channel that those are not the sounds that I make during Hanky Panky. And more of the hip flexor raises because they're doing the trick. People are commenting where the strap's from. It is from Spud Inc. And this one is probably like 15 years old now. And like, other than being a little bit faded, no worse for wear. Spud Inc. makes wonderful cable attachments, straps, sleeves, etc. They're sick. Mark Bartley's sick. Definitely. Recommend 10 out of 10. Just like I recommend hip flexor training 10 out of 10. And like, you gotta think about hip flexors like the biceps of the hip, I guess. And like, everyone knows that it's important to train triceps for a strong bench, but they also know that you'd be very silly to just totally ignore the elbow flexion side because if you have strong triceps, but no ability to control the flexion, you ain't gonna be able to use them very well and very similar can be said for the hip. Ah. And it just make your hips feel oh so wonderful afterwards. And like, key thing here is to keep tension in your abs, your pelvis isn't just like dumping and you're going in lumbar extension. You wanna keep tension in the abs so that we are getting a bit of hip flexor stretch at the bottom. And just pull hard to the top. Get like an ever so slight hold. Let it go to the extension. Ah. And go till it sucks. The difference between the lifters who succeed and the lifters who don't are the lifters who don't succeed would have a day like this and then quit before it even gets started then go on Instagram and whine about how they didn't have the training session or the meet or the whatever that they wanted to. The lifters that succeed, they're gonna have a day like this and they are going to figure out how to make it productive. They're gonna suck it up and take the time to troubleshoot to see if they can still make it happen. And then if they can't make it happen, 
they're going to have the humility to pivot so they can still make the day push them ahead in the big picture. And if you're just looking at what lifters post on Instagram, like you're seeing the good lifters post their top sets. Like when I go and post that foam press on Instagram, people are gonna be like, holy shit, Seth, that's really good with your pack. And then they're not gonna realize how much challenge it was to get to that set today, let alone get into that set in the context of coming back from the surgery. And what happens with a lot of intermediates is they just see all of the cool shit happening. And then they think like, oh, it's just easy for them. It's hard for me. Poor me, wah, 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 wah. When in reality, it's fucking hard for everyone. And if you want to make it, you need to just suck it the fuck up and get the job done. Anyways, it's going to be difficult to be good at anything. Anything that is worth doing is going to be difficult. And not only do you need to understand it, you need to embrace it and realize that if you can overcome the difficult, you will get the opportunity to do good. So that's what I'm leaving out today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out. Have a good rest of your night.